breezed through spring and now it's summer and things are going well until you notice some white spots, most likely on your squash plants. If only it were whitefly, but whitefly are on the bottom of the leaves and these white fluffy spots are on the top. Yep, you've got powdery mildew, just like the rest of us. In this video, I'm gonna show you some ways to prevent it and some surefire ways to treat it and actually get it gone within 24 hours. Coming up. Hey, I'm Brian with California Garden TV. And if you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you grow your best garden ever, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So in order to deal with powdery mildew, you first have to diagnose it. Now I'm sitting in front of the squash plants because in my garden, at least, that's the first plants that get it. It does move to the tomatoes sometimes, but really 90% of my issues are on all the cucurbit family, the squashes, the melons. Now there are some squash varieties like Caserta here that have a white pattern on their leaves. And I know I've gotten several comments or questions in other videos where I've shown these leaves, they've asked about mildew. This isn't mildew. And you can see with this type of patterning that it kind of follows the veining of the leaf. Now, when you are looking for powdery mildew, it is not, it doesn't follow any specific pattern. You're going to see first some little tiny dots of white, and they'll kind of look like a miniature spray paint uh, spot. They're going to be whiter in the middle, and then they're going to move out from that just a little bit fuzzy on the edges. Not necessarily 3D fuzzy, just in the look. Then it's going to start to spread and other spots are going to get it. Now you're mostly going to see this on the older leaves of the plant. So especially on squash plants, that's why I, one of the reasons I grow them up like this and I keep the bottom leaves cut off. Because with any disease, the closer it is to the soil, the older it is on the plant, those are the ones that are going to be infected first. So now that you've diagnosed and found out that you do have powdery mildew, and all of us will get it. I don't know of any gardener that does not come in contact with powdery mildew at some point throughout the season. Now, I live in a pretty dry climate compared to most of the United States and the world, actually. Um, well, maybe not the world, but definitely the United States. And we still get it all the time, every year, even with prevention measures in place. So prevention helps because it doesn't, it, first of all, it pushes it further into the season. Uh, it also keeps it from getting as bad. So prevention, I'm going to go through prevention first. Then I'm going to talk about one product, the only product you need for this. And I've mentioned it many times before. It works for almost everything. Uh, one product that will knock it out within 24 hours. But if you don't have that product on hand and you have an emergency, I'm going to give you several home remedies uh, with things you probably already have somewhere in your house that you can try as well. So prevention first. Now saying that, first of all, I'm gonna preface this um, by saying, I don't think it's possible to organically prevent powdery mildew 100%. But like I said, there are advantages to it uh, to keep it from becoming a big, big problem. So the first thing is do not crowd your plants. And you know, plants are really against wearing masks. It's really hard to get them to do that. So they, they do need to socially distance. <laughs> anyway, you want to have a plenty of airflow. If you see here, my plants are about 18 inches to two feet apart. Um, I also keep them limbed up like I was mentioning. And you can see there's not a lot of places for moisture and things to hide. There's plenty of airflow when you grow them this way. Now I'll link to the other video that shows how I grow them this way. Um, so you can check that out, but that's important. You want to maintain as dry uh, an environment as possible throughout the leaves. You also want to cut off any diseased leaves ASAP. And I'm talking about any type of plant you see them on beans, squash, tomatoes. It doesn't matter. Get those leaves gone and you don't want to compost them. You don't want to let them lay on the ground. You want them in the trash. If you let them lay on the ground, that 
the fungus will just go right into the soil and it'll be there to bounce right back up onto your plants this season or next. I already mentioned prune all the old leaves off of your plants and I'm talking beans, tomatoes, squash, any, any leaves that are toward the bottom that are starting to turn yellow, not necessarily diseased, but old. The plant doesn't need those anymore. So just get rid of them. Keep it clean, keep it tidy, and that's gonna go a long way to preventing uh, a lot of your powdery mildew problems. Because just like with any pest or disease, or mainly disease, they really want to attack the weaker leaves first and get a foothold there and then spread. So if there aren't any old leaves, it's gonna make it more difficult for them. And pruning off the lower leaves also lessens the chance of splash from the ground to the leaves to bring that soil borne bacteria up onto the leaves. So just prune your leaves, it's a good thing. Now that's also why I always say to water the soil and not the leaves. If you can invest in drip systems, absolutely the best thing I've ever done for my garden. I'm gonna be doing a video on that. Uh, it'll be the first video in August, I believe. And uh, I've got some good tips and some really cool things I've been trying I wanna share with you. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon for notifications of that video. The last preventative measure is to not grow the plants in too much shade. They need at least six hours of sunlight, if not more, and anything less than that is gonna make them more susceptible to attack by powdery mildew. So like I said, all of these things in place will push that powdery mildew further into the season, but you're inevitably going to get it. If you haven't gotten it before, then please leave a comment down below and tell us what you did because 99.999% of all the other gardeners in the world wanna know. Now, after you have the powdery mildew, what do you do to get rid of it? Well, there's one product that works like a charm every time and gets rid of it in 24 hours. And it's the same wonder product that I use on almost everything else in the garden, and that is neem oil. You wanna dilute it according to the package directions. Make sure you dilute it. I had somebody write to me a couple of days ago and they did not realize that it was a concentrate and they didn't dilute it and they burned up their plants. Um, anything I tell you to spray on your plants, it's always a good idea if it's the first time to spray just on a couple of leaves and let it sit for a couple of days and see if anything happens bad to it. And then you'll know it's safe for using on everything. But once you know it's safe, you wanna spray the tops and the bottoms of the leaves. Really early morning is best. And spray it heavily. I mean, you want every surface, top and bottom, covered with the neem oil. Now you can also throw in some liquid fertilizer like Neptune's Harvest to get a chance since you're wetting the leaves anyway to get some uh, foliar feeding in. Now neem oil is not a preventative so you really you know as soon as you see it start that's when you want to get on top of it. It's not going to prevent it from happening but it will stop it once you've got it. Now neem works well for so many things. It's organic, uh, it's safe for pollinators so you need to get some bottom line, but if you haven't gotten it yet, and if you're in an emergency situation, there's some things around the house that you probably have that you can use to fight off the powdery mildew. So let me go through some of those. And again, with all of these, you wanna try it on a few leaves first, wait a day or two, and just make sure nothing bad happens. Now again, before you do any of these methods, you want to remove all of the affected leaves if possible. Don't remove more than one fourth of the plant. Otherwise you could put your plant into shock, but remove as many of the affected leaves as possible and then go into these uh, home remedies. And just like with the neem, all of these are gonna be applied heavily to the top and bottom of the leaves using a sprayer. So the first one is good old hydrogen peroxide, the 3% kind you could get at a drugstore. And you want to put in about a half of a cup to three quarters of a cup per gallon in your sprayer. Mix it up, spray the leaves heavily top and bottom. Milk, whole, skim, fat free, low fat, whatever, it doesn't matter. Two parts milk to three parts water in a sprayer. Mouthwash, good old Listerine. Keeps your plants breath fresh and the powdery mildew away. One part mouthwash to three parts water. You can also use white vinegar, two to three tablespoons per gallon of water. You can also use baking soda, three tablespoons to a gallon of water. 
You wanna squirt in about three drops of dish soap and about a tablespoon of cooking oil. Mix it all up. Those other ingredients help it stick to the plant and stay on the plant. All right, so that's a lot of arsenal to, to be armed with against powdery mildew. Again, prevention is gonna go a long way, not all the way. Neem oil will knock it out quickly, but other than that, all those other home remedies will work. I've tried most of them and I've got it on good authority that some of them that I haven't tried work really well. So if you have some ways that you love to use against powdery mildew, let us know in the comments. If you learned something, give the video a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you guys next time.